वेलकम बैक टू अवर लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन नैनो स्ट्रक्चर मेटीरियल साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आई एम प्रोफेसर आशुतोष तिवारी फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मेटीरियल साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ यूथा इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी डेवलप द लैंग्वेज ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स लर्निंग अबाउट वेव फंक्शन ऑर्बिटर्स क्वांटम नंबर एंड द पार्किल इन ए बॉक्स मॉडल दीज आइडियाज गेव अस द फाउंडेशन टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन बिहेव एट द माइक्रोस्कोपिक स्केल Today in lecture 8 we take the next step applying those quantum principles directly to nanostructures we will see how confinement in zero one and two dimensional space gives rise to entirely new physical property we will also explore quantum dots nanowires graphene tunneling phenomena and their technological applications this is where quantum mechanics meets real nano science showing us why the nano scale world behave so differently from bulk when we shrink matter down to nanometer dimension electrons no longer behave as they do in bulk in a state of a smooth continuum of energies the allowed states split into discrete levels this quantization means that even a small changes in size a few atoms more or less can dramatically alter a material's color conductivity or reactivity at this scale size itself becomes a design parameter opening the door to entirely new properties quantum confinement can be classified by dimensionality in zero d systems like quantum dots electrons are trapped in all directions leading to sharp discrete energy states in 1d systems such as nanowires electrons move freely along the length but are confined in the cross section in 2d materials like thin films and graphene electrons are restricted in thickness but free in plane creating unique band structures finally in 3d bulk materials electrons are not confined so the energy bands are continuous as in conventional solids as we reduce dimensionality confinement increases and quantum effects dominate let us recall the particle in a box model from our last lecture when a particle is confined its allowed energy levels are no longer continuous they are quantized and the smaller the box the farther apart these energy levels become this model captures the essence of nano scale physics when materials are reduced to nanometer sizes confinement directly controls their energy gaps that is why shrinking a nano particle can change its color or conductivity The particle in a box is not just a toy model; it is a direct analogy for real nanomaterials. Quantum dots are zero-dimensional nanocrystals where electrons are confined in all three directions. This confinement produces discrete energy levels, much like the particle in a box model we discussed earlier. A key consequence is that the band gap is not fixed; it depends on the size of the quantum dot. The smaller dots have a larger band gap and therefore emit higher energy blue or light larger dots have a smaller band gap and emit lower energy red or light this direct link between size and color is a hallmark of quantum confinement and this size color control is the scientific basis that makes them useful in technology quantum dots are no longer just a laboratory curiosity they are already transforming industry in consumer electronics they power qled displays producing vivid energy efficient colors in medicine they serve as fluorescent bioimaging probes allowing researchers to track processes inside cells with remarkable precision in energy they are being integrated into solar cells where their tunable band gaps improve light harvesting and efficiency and beyond these established uses Quantum dots are being developed for lasers, advanced sensors, and even anti-counterfeiting inks. Here is how the scientific principle we just discussed is already transforming industries. In nanowires, electrons are free to move along the length of the wire, but their motion is restricted in the cross-sectional directions. This one-dimensional confinement alters the available energy states. allowing us to tune the band gap simply by changing the diameter of the wire as a result 
nano wires display unique electrical and optical properties not found in bulk materials. They are promising for use in transistors, nanoscale interconnects, light emitting devices, and even next generation solar cells and batteries. In short, nanowires bridge the worlds of quantum confinement and real device applications. Graphene is one of the most remarkable 2D nanomaterials. It is just one atom thick, yet it is stronger than steel and conducts electricity better than copper. What makes graphene special is its unusual band structure. Near the so-called Dirac point, its energy dispersion is linear, which means its electrons behave like massless particles. This gives graphene extremely high electron mobility and conductivity. At the same time, graphene's thin, flexible and transparent nature makes it useful in mechanical, optical and electronic applications. This combination of properties, strength, conductivity and flexibility makes graphene a perfect example of how quantum effects in 2D systems can create entirely new classes of materials. Graphene showed us how unusual band structures at the nanoscale can give rise to entirely new behaviors. But graphene is not the only story. In many nanosystems, another strange quantum effect plays a central role, quantum tunneling. Let us understand what quantum tunneling really means, why it is impossible in classical physics and how it enables modern quantum devices. As we discussed in the last slide, tunneling is at the heart of many nanosystems. Before I explain what tunneling actually means, let us first define another term, the barrier. A barrier is a simply a reason where the potential energy is higher than the particle's own energy. Classically, this could be like a hill that a rolling ball cannot climb if it does not have enough energy. At the nano scale, barriers can be very thin insulating layers or potential wells created by electric fields. Now in classical physics, if the particle's energy is less than the barrier height, it always reflects back, crossing is impossible. But in quantum physics, the particle is described by a wave function. This wave function does not vanish abruptly at the barrier. It extends into the barrier and decays, which gives a finite probability that the particle appears on the other side. So, tunneling is a phenomenon where what is classically forbidden becomes possible because of quantum mechanics. When we solve Schrodinger's equation inside the barrier, the wave function does not vanish, it decays exponentially. The decay constant depends on the mass of the particle and how the barrier is compared to its energy. The most striking point is this. The thickness of the barrier matters even more than its height. If the barrier is very thick, the wave function decays almost completely and tunneling is negligible. But if the barrier is thin, only a few nanometers, there is always a finite chance the particle will appear on the other side even if the barrier is very tall. This is what makes tunneling profoundly different from classical systems. In classical mechanics, too tall is absolute. The particle cannot pass. In quantum mechanics, thickness opens a door, making the impossible possible. Quantum tunneling is not just a strange prediction of quantum mechanics. It powers technologies and even stars. In tunnel diodes, tunneling allows ultra-fast electronic switching beyond what classical devices can achieve. In flash memory, electrons tunnel through thin oxide barriers, making non-volatile data storage possible. The scanning tunneling microscopes uses tunneling currents to map out surfaces atom by atom, giving us direct images of matter at a nanoscale. And in nature, tunneling makes nuclear fusion in the stars possible. Protons do not have enough energy to overcome their mutual repulsion by classical means, but tunneling allows them to fuse, fueling the sun and every star in the universe. So, tunneling bridges the gap between abstract quantum principles and the very real technologies and natural processes that shape our world. At the nano scale, barriers are so thin 
that tunneling is not rare, it is the rule. This changes how electrons move and allows devices like quantum dots, nanowires and single electron transistor to function. Looking ahead, tunneling also plays a key role in quantum computing architectures. So tunneling becomes not just a phenomenon, but a design principle for future nanotechnology. A classical example of tunneling applied in real-life nanoscale characterization is the scanning tunneling microscope or STM. In STM, a sharp conducting tip is brought within a nanometer of the sample surface. At this distance, electrons can tunnel between the tip and the surface even though they are separated by a vacuum gap. The tunneling current depends exponentially on the tip sample distance. So even a small height changes at the atomic scale cause measurable differences. By scanning the tip across the surface and recording the tunneling current, the STM constructs images with true atomic resolution, showing us the position of individual atoms. This is a direct example of how tunneling, once considered a strange quantum effect, has become the foundation of one of the most powerful tools in nanoscience. The scanning tunneling microscopy showed us how quantum effects can be harnessed for imaging. But tunneling also appears in something much closer to everyday life, transistors. For decades, Moore's law has driven the miniaturization of transistors, doubling the number that fit on a chip roughly every two years. But as we shrink devices into the nanometer range, their behavior changes fundamentally. Transistors stop behaving like simple classical switches and begin acting like quantum valves with discrete energy states. Barriers that once seemed impenetrable now allow tunneling currents to leak through. In other words, Moore's law has brought us to the edge of the quantum limit of electronics, where device design must account for quantum mechanics directly, not just as a small correction. As transistors approach the quantum limit, one fascinating design is the single electron transistor or SET. SET is exploited two uniquely quantum effects, tunneling and Coulomb blocking. We have already seen how tunneling lets electrons cross barriers that are classically forbidden. Now, Coulomb blocket adds another layer. When electrons are confined to a tiny island, adding just one extra electron requires a noticeable charging energy. At low bias voltages, this energy blocks current. No electrons can pass. But once the applied voltage is high enough to overcome this charging energy, electrons can tunnel through the barriers one by one. This means the current is quantized at the level of single electrons. This extreme miniaturization goes well beyond conventional CMOS scaling. It makes SETs ideal for applications where we need ultra-low power switching or where quantum control of charge is essential for example in quantum information devices. So the single electron transistor is a striking example of how quantum confinement, tunneling and Coulomb blockade together transform challenges into opportunities for new generation of electronics. Another striking example of a quantum confinement in action is the quantum well. In these structures, electrons and holes are confined in a very thin semiconductor layer only a few nanometers thick. This confinement forces their energy states to become discrete in the growth direction, while still allowing free motion in the plane. The result is highly controlled electron hole recombination. That efficiency is exactly what makes semiconductor lasers work. Quantum wells are the foundation of the tiny laser diodes we see in the DVD players, barcode scanners, fiber optic communication systems, and many photonic devices that power modern technology. So quantum wells show us how carefully engineered confinement can transform abstract quantum effects into practical everyday technology. Quantum mechanics does not stop at nanoscale materials. It is now forming the basis of a completely new type of computing, quantum computing. The fundamental difference begins with the qubit. Unlike a classical bit, which is rigidly either 0 or 1, a qubit can be in superposition. It can exist as 0, 1 or both at the same time. This dramatically expands the information space available to computation. 
Another principle is entanglement. When qubits become entangled, their states are linked so that measuring one immediately tells you something about the other, even if they are far apart. This correlation, which has no classical counterpart, is a powerful resource for computation. Together, superposition and entanglement allow quantum computers to explore many possible solutions simultaneously and in some cases reach answers much faster than classical machines ever could. While building a practical quantum computer is still a challenge, the hardware itself often depends on the nanoscale systems. Quantum dots, Josephson junctions in superconducting circuits or even trapped ions manipulated with lasers. So, although this topic goes beyond the scope of our nanotechnology course, it is directly connected to the quantum phenomena we have been studying, confinement, tunneling, and probabilistic behavior, and shows how these strange rules of nature are now being turned into revolutionary technology. Now that we have looked at how quantum ideas even extend toward computing, let us return to the central theme of nanotechnology, how size itself reshapes material properties. In bulk materials, electrons occupy continuous energy bands. This gives rise to familiar properties of metals, semiconductors, and insulators that we study in classical solid state physics. But when we shrink materials to the nanoscale, confinement breaks these continuous bands into discrete energy layers. This is why nanoparticles, nanowires, and quantum dots behave so differently from their bulk counterparts. For example, nanostructures can change color depending on size, tune their conductivity, or display magnetic properties that bulk materials never show. So the transition from bulk to nano is not just a matter of scaling down. It is a fundamental shift in how electrons and therefore matter itself behave. We have just seen how nanostructures split bulk energy bands into discrete levels, but how do we know this is real and not just theory? The evidence comes straight from experiment. Optical measurements show that nanoparticles absorb and emit different colors depending on their size. A bulk material might appear uniform, but its nanoscale version can glow blue or red simply because confinement shifts the energy gaps. Scanning tunneling microscopy gives us atomic scale images showing electrons confined in space and even mapping standing wave patterns on surfaces. And with quantum dots, we observe sharp emission peaks that shift with size exactly what we expect from quantized energy levels. Together, these experiments leave no doubt. Quantum confinement is real, measurable, and it fundamentally changes how matter behaves at the nanoscale. Let us pull everything together. The nanoscale is quantum by nature. When materials are confined, continuous bands break into discrete energy levels and the size dependence directly controls properties. We explored 0D, 1D and 2D systems, quantum dots, nanowires and graphene, each revealing unique quantum behaviors. We saw how quantum tunneling challenges classical ideas enabling technologies like scanning tunneling microscopy and single electron transistors. And we connected these principles to nanoscience, where shrinking transistors brings us closer to the quantum limit. Finally, we linked it to real-world applications, brighter displays, advanced sensors, renewable energy devices, and even the foundations of quantum computing. So the big picture is clear. Understanding confinement and tunneling is not just about theory. It is the key to modern nanotechnology and its future innovations.